Hi, I'm Joan Joyce, and you're watching the Fast Pitch TV Show. If you're a fan of softball, then you are going to love the Fast Pitch TV Show, sponsored by Easton Sports. Now the man that knows more about softball than anyone on the planet, your host, Gary Leland. Hello and welcome to the Fast Pitch TV Show. Now if you're watching this episode on YouTube, Facebook, MySpace, or another video sharing site, please check out our website. Our website is www.fastpitch.tv. It's the place to find past episodes. It's also the place to keep up with future episodes. And I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank our sponsor, Easton Sports. The truth is there is a difference. The difference is Easton. Please visit their website at www.eastonsoftball.com. Okay, now last week we had part one of our interview with softball legend Joan Joyce. Now, if you didn't get to see that interview and you don't know who Joan Joyce is, all I will say is she's probably the greatest softball player of all times. And she may even be the greatest female athlete of all times. Now, you can watch last week's episode and get caught up and see where we at so far and also you can see all her accomplishments because I am not going to name all those accomplishments again they're just way too many to name and they take way too long because she has so many now as I told you this week we're going to have part two of the interview with Joan now Joan this week this week Joan is going to tell us uh, the story about her striking out baseball legend Ted Williams that's right striking out Ted Williams in case you don't know who Ted Williams is in baseball, he was one of the greatest hitters of all times. They said his eyes were so good that when someone pitched him a baseball, he could tell you by reading the ball if it was an American League ball or a National League ball. That's amazing. Now, I do have to apologize in advance because during the interview, the announcer at the game in the background started denouncing the teams. So the audio is not perfect. It's not quite as good as I'd like it to be. Let's go on with the interview. Well, here's, here's the way the story went. Um, Ted Williams was very much involved in the Jimmy Fund up in uh, the New England area. And the Waterbury Police Department, which was where I was from, did a great job of raising money for the Jimmy Fund. And one of the police officers had a son that had the disease of the Jimmy Fund, and I don't even remember now what the disease was. I think it could be could have been cancer or muscular dystrophy or something like that. But anyway, they they um, would do events for a whole week and raise money and donate it to the Jimmy Fund. And they were probably the biggest donators of money to the Jimmy Fund. And so they came up with an idea that um, that we should invite Ted Williams down to the uh, you know the festivities down in in Connecticut in Waterbury. So one day they give me a call and uh, ask if I would go with them up to Ted Williams's camp, you know his baseball camp, and uh, pitch to the counselors, you know just do some stuff up there, bring my uniform, glove, and everything. And uh, I said, sure, I'd love to do it, you know. So off we go up to Massachusetts, you know, to go to Ted Williams baseball camp. And we get up there, and I pitch to, I pitch to all the counselors. I pitch to Williams. And at the time, I was having a little bit of a problem with my arm. So I really wasn't going out, you know, as hard as I could. And we went through the whole day. It was a great day. We're going up to have lunch with Williams, and they're going to ask the big question, you know, will you come down for to do an exhibition and we were walking up and Ted Williams was walking up in front of me and all of a sudden he stopped and he turned around and he said to me he said how do you throw that curveball you know so I showed him how I held it on the seam how I had to spin it to make it go to where I needed to go and he looked at me and he said you know girls shouldn't know that and I said well this girl does know that and so we go up into uh, the dining hall we have uh, we have lunch and you know they proposed the question to him asked him if he would come down to uh, Waterbury Connecticut to do an exhibition you know, Number we would 19, be playing a game against uh, another team, Number and in between the games, Jessica, that um, I would pitch to him. Um, actually, it was him, 
um, and a couple and of Dom DiMaggio, and also uh, there was a pitcher, a major league pitcher from Naugatuck, Connecticut, uh, that was also there. But anyway, I would throw to uh, Dom DiMaggio and also Ted Williams, and he said he would love to do it. Okay, so we got him to come down. The time came, he came down, we had a big luncheon that afternoon, and my coach was sitting next to him. And in the conversation, you know, at the luncheon, Ted Williams told my coach, you know, that he didn't like the high tight pitch. And so after the luncheon was over, the coach came to me and he said, I got the scoop on Williams. He doesn't like the high tight pitch. I said, well, it's a good thing you're the coach and I'm the pitcher. I said, because Ted Williams is not getting a high tight pitch. I said, he is going to get some rice balls that will be high. I said, but if he's going to hit me, he's going to have to hit my drop. I said, because he's got the best eyes in baseball. And they, you know, say that he can read the stitching and the name, the, the, the name on the balls. And I said, if he's that good at seeing it, I'm not going to give him anything up where he can see it. I want him to hit it down here someplace. So that's what I did. I, um, I threw him drops. We, you know, got to the ballpark that night. And uh, he, said, uh, he said to me, he said, you know, he said, when you go out there, just warm up and throw some pitches to Dom DiMaggio. And he said, just throw him in. He can't see out of his left eye. Let him hit the ball. And he said, when I come up, go ahead and fire. So I did, let Dom DiMaggio hit the ball all over the place and then Williams came up and uh, had him up for about 10, 12 minutes, 15 minutes and finally he threw the bat down and said, I can't hit it. And he followed off three pitches on me. So it was, uh, it was, it was a great event. 17,000 people there. I can't tell you how many people have come and told me, you know, that they were there that day when I struck out 10 Williams. I swear the whole country was there. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed part two of the interview. Now this weekend I will be at the College World Series in Oklahoma City. Now if you see me there, please come up and say hello. You'll probably see me in the parking lot with my camera trying to get some interviews in. So please come up and say hello and let me know you're a fan of the show. Don't forget to tell your friends about the Fast Pitch TV show and check out our website, like I said earlier, at www.fastpitch.tv. And visit our fans page, how about it, on Facebook. Just go to Facebook and search Fast Pitch TV and um, become a fan of the pay of the show. If you're on Twitter, we're at twitter.com slash fastpitchnews. Now it's time to say goodbye, and we will end it with a word from our sponsor, East in the Sports. Thanks for watching. This bat's great, great pop, nice smooth zone, feels good on the hands. The sweet spot is pretty nice, um, it's not as small as some other bats, even if you don't hit it exactly on it, the ball still travels as far as it's supposed to.